it's not just about bricks and stones. It's really about some important message. It's the way we see human civilization evolving and developing. Let's not forget again this is a weapon of war. It's killing the identity of others. How could this happen to monuments that have survived the ravages of the environment, natural disasters, and in this 21st century, we are seeing a willful destruction of these things. Part of war and conflict has always been the collateral damage. Buildings have fallen the path of military objectives, but there has always been another war going on. One of the ways to get rid of history is by remove all the physical traces of the history. Make believe that nothing ever happened, nothing was ever there. You can't find any artifacts, you can't find anything, because everything has been, has vanished. In this war, buildings aren't destroyed because they're in the way of a target. The buildings are the target. People are people within a place. Their history, their identity, how they draw meaning about who they are happens in a place. And what happens to that place matters. Those buildings are part of who they are. There were grenades, there were killings, there were expulsions everywhere, but I just reacted most profoundly when I heard about the Oriental Institute. Somehow I just put two and two together, I think, for the first time. I thought, this is not just about somebody expressing their momentary anger and killing other people. This is somebody who knows what is held in that library. They know what they are doing, and they are doing it for a particular purpose. This is not just, this is not going to go away. They are rewriting history at this very moment. A century of wave after thunderous wave of destruction. This war against culture is not over. It's been steadily increasing. How can we stem its path and save the story of who we are? These acts of vandalism are a tragedy for all civilized people. And the civilized world must take a stand.